Picture the Mona Lisa. Her smile, knowing, mysterious, a hint of something indefinable. Or think of the Last Supper, the precise composition, the frozen moment of high drama, the way your eyes are drawn to Christ as the central figure, and yet there's an undercurrent of unease. Now, imagine these iconic masterpieces aren't just beautiful paintings, but puzzles, carefully crafted by one of history's most brilliant minds. Leonardo da Vinci, we are told, was the quintessential Renaissance man. A painter, yes, but also so much more. He dissected bodies to understand anatomy, sketched fantastical flying contraptions, and even dabbled in music. Let's pause for a moment. Was this just boundless curiosity, or could there be a hidden method to his seemingly scattered pursuits? And then there's the matter of his peculiar writing style, mirror script flowing from right to left, as if deliberately obscuring his thoughts. Why would someone do that? Was he protecting his ideas from prying eyes, or is it a clue to a deeper kind of code embedded within his work? To start decoding da Vinci, we need to grasp the way his mind worked. He didn't see boundaries between art, science, and engineering. For him, it was all part of a grand quest to unravel the mysteries of the universe, the mechanics of the human body, the principles of light and shadow, the hidden patterns underlying nature itself. Leonardo da Vinci wasn't just ahead of his time. He seemed like a man slightly out of step with his own era. Look at his anatomical sketches, the intricate details of muscles, bones, and organs. This wasn't mere artistic exercise. This was scientific inquiry centuries before modern medicine or flip through pages of his notebooks, and you'll find designs for machines resembling helicopters and tanks, technological visions that wouldn't be realized for centuries to come. Now, let's hold that thought and revisit his peculiar writing style. Mirrored script is hardly practical for everyday note-taking. Was it a way to safeguard his groundbreaking ideas from rivals? Perhaps. But could there be more to it? Could this unusual practice reflect a mind that fundamentally saw the world a bit differently, one prone to puzzles and hidden meanings? His paintings, after all, don't just tell us a story. They invite us to look closer, to search for details that initially seem insignificant. This brings up an important point. Our modern world craves definitive answers and easy explanations, but history isn't always so straightforward, especially with someone as complex as da Vinci. It's tempting to dismiss speculation about hidden codes as mere flights of fancy, and some theories are more credible than others. But the possibility, the whisper of something more, is what makes his work so captivating even centuries later. Let's dive into a specific example, a painting that has tantalized art historians, conspiracy theorists, and casual observers alike, The Last Supper. The Last Supper is a masterpiece of drama and technical skill. Just look at its composition, Christ as the calm focal point amidst a whirlwind of startled apostles, the room itself echoing with geometric precision. Yet, at a first glance, da Vinci's version seems a fairly traditional depiction of this pivotal biblical scene. Jesus surrounded by his twelve disciples, halos gleaming, gestures telling of the shock and betrayal. But this is where potential hidden messages come into play. Take a closer look at the way the apostles are grouped. Some theories suggest they cluster into threes, hinting at the Holy Trinity, or form geometric shapes, mirroring those found throughout the painting. Did da Vinci deliberately arrange them to convey a deeper mathematical order within the chaos of the moment? Then there's the figure seated to Jesus' right. Traditionally, this is the Apostle John, often depicted as young and beardless. But in da Vinci's portrayal, the figure has softer, almost feminine features. Could this be a subtle clue pointing to Mary Magdalene, a significant figure in some alternative Gospels but highly controversial within mainstream Christian theology of the time? Others have delved deeper, finding supposed musical notes encoded in the position of hands and loaves of bread as if the painting itself holds a secret melody. Or they point to the landscape background, questioning whether its fantastical appearance is purely artistic license or might hold coded references to real locations. Now let's consider the most analyzed portrait in history, the iconic Mona Lisa. That smile, that enigmatic expression, is it the pinnacle of Renaissance portraiture or something more? Let's dive into the enduring enigma of the Mona Lisa. That smile, that knowing gaze, is it simply the product of da Vinci's genius with a paintbrush, 
a testament to his skill in capturing the subtleties of human expression? Or could there be more to it? Her identity itself is a puzzle that has never been fully solved. Some theories point to a Florentine merchant's wife, others to a favored noblewoman, or even a playful self-portrait of da Vinci himself in female form. The fact that this fundamental question of who she was remains unanswered only adds to the painting's mystique. Let's talk about that landscape. It's breathtaking, but also utterly bizarre. Towering mountains, winding paths, and a sense of something dreamlike and otherworldly. Could these fantastical features represent a real place, perhaps a location of special significance to da Vinci or his sitter? Or might the landscape be a symbolic map of the mind, the winding path representing the journey of self-discovery or a philosophical quest for knowledge? The Mona Lisa compels us to become detectives, analyzing every brushstroke, every curve of her lips, looking for clues that may or may not exist. It's a painting that seems to unveil new secrets the longer you gaze upon it, drawing you into a silent conversation across the centuries with the mind of its creator. Now you might be wondering, were Renaissance artists prone to sneaking these complex, hidden meanings into their work? Or is this a uniquely da Vinci phenomenon? Here's where we need to delve a little deeper into Leonardo da Vinci's worldview. Can we separate the artist from the scientist, the inventor, from the curious observer of the natural world? Highly unlikely. Da Vinci lived in an era when science and spirituality weren't seen as opposing forces. Thinkers and artists of the Renaissance were fascinated by concepts like the divine proportion, the idea that there's an underlying mathematical harmony within the universe and in the ideal human form. Could da Vinci, with his love of geometry, his relentless study of anatomy and his deep philosophical leanings have woven similar concepts into his most famous works? Perhaps he saw art as a vehicle not just for representing reality, but for expressing complex ideas that defied easy explanation. Of course, it's crucial to distinguish between credible theories and wild flights of fancy. Not every unusual detail or artistic flourish is necessarily a secret message. But the beauty of da Vinci's art lies in its ability to invite multiple interpretations. He forces us to look closer, to think critically, not passively accept the surface image. In a way, the act of deciphering his masterpieces echoes his own insatiable curiosity about the world. Whether or not we ever unravel all the so-called Da Vinci Code, his paintings are more than just beautiful objects. They are tantalizing puzzles left behind by a restless, brilliant mind. Their ongoing allure speaks to a universal human desire to find meaning beyond the visible, to uncover hidden patterns and connections that hint at greater truths about ourselves and our place in the universe. The ultimate lesson of Leonardo da Vinci isn't about secret societies or grand conspiracies. It's about the boundless potential of human curiosity, the enduring power of art to spark wonder, and a reminder that the most profound mysteries might be the ones we discover by looking at the world with fresh eyes and an open mind.